If you have never been in a live fire situation, if you've not been around guns fired in anger, tonight's reporting by our chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel might just bring you as close as you can possibly get as Richard continues his reporting on the war in Afghanistan. You may remember Richard's earlier series of reports from the so-called Valley of Death, a highly dangerous remote mountain region near the border with Pakistan. Tonight, Richard and his team find themselves right in the middle of an intense firefight when they revisit the men of Viper Company, the Americans at the tip of the spear. What you're about to see is violent, but put it this way, if you have a kid in this war, this is what your kid's been up to. Just after 7 a.m. in the Korengal Valley, a dozen soldiers from Viper Company move out. The mission, to flush out the Taliban from the village of Laniel. But getting there is a four-hour march, always exposed over footbridges and past stone houses. And Bravo platoon leader Lieutenant Justin Smith worries it's a trap that local elders tipped off the Taliban. And do you think the enemy knows you're coming? Yeah, they do. In Laniel, the troops set up in a destroyed house, high on a hillside. The soldiers were right to be suspicious. Within minutes, they're attacked. We're taking heavy fire from... Sergeant Christopher Thompson is wearing a camera on his helmet. Fire to the left of the draw! Now! As he's recording, so are we. A rarely seen perspective. Multiple simultaneous angles inside a firefight. In the last year, Viper Company has been in more than 500 firefights. The soldiers have become fast and lethal. They quickly identify the 10 or so Taliban attacking in teams of two. The soldiers are hardened. They've learned to block out emotion, focus, and manage their adrenaline. The best way to describe that is you have an like extreme alerted sense where you really alert to what's going on. Everything that's moving around you, every sound you hear is just drawing your attention. Recon, take care of a firing rocket! And it feels like you're just processing things in your brain much faster. The soldiers fire rockets and grenades. They call in air support and more than 40 mortars. The Taliban are close. Their fire accurate. They've gotten better too. They've been taking incoming rounds from at least two positions on this hilltop. Some of the rounds were bouncing right off these rocks around us. Now they're trying to put out as much fire as they can to try and cut the attackers. The soldiers fire so much, ammunition is running low. Slow your rate of fire! Conserve the ammo! The troops think they've killed three or four Taliban fighters. Cease fire! Cease fire! And after an hour, it's over. You can see where some of the rounds were hitting. These black spots are where the bullets were smacking against the rock. Now the soldiers are trying to figure out how to get out of here. But so many close calls have taught them it's as important to be lucky as good. Hey, you see those? This fight, like, people don't understand. Like, looking at it, you're like, oh, no Americans got wounded. Like, uh, my gunner, Oxman, he was taking rounds right over his head. Like, they were cracking easily six inches over his head. See where the smoke is? The gray smoke? Shoot it! So this could have turned into, you know, a situation where we lost American lives. The fact that we came out on top, excellent. I always think about afterwards how, uh, how close we came to being a disaster. The soldiers consider this mission a success, but there's no celebration or bravado. Not anymore. Eight soldiers from Viper Company have been killed in battles like this one, where the difference between life and death is measured in inches. Richard Engel, NBC News, Coringal. Allow me to state the obvious. This is an incredible piece of reporting, and it continues on this broadcast tomorrow night when Richard looks at the toll this kind of battle tempo is taking on these incredible young men. We've also posted a few more elements, including more of that helmet cam video. It's on our website, nightly.msnbc.com.